Welcome to a new video guide about GDMS networking. In this video, we will demonstrate how GDMS streamlines GWN access points, deployment, and configuration. We will show how every aspect of the Wi-Fi network configuration can be implemented from the GDMS portal. Grandstream Device Management System provides a centralized platform for managing Grandstream networking devices including GWN access points. GDMS allows you to configure, monitor, and manage your entire Wi-Fi network remotely through a cloud-based portal, accessible from anywhere. GDMS offers zero-touch provisioning, which eliminates manual intervention, and it automatically configures GWN access points once they are connected to the network. In a previous video guide, we demonstrated how to add GWN devices to GDMS and assign them to the desired networks. Three GWN access points have been added to this network, and they all show the green dot. To add a new Wi-Fi network, expand the settings submenu and click Wi-Fi. A default SSID is automatically created when a network is added in GDMS. It has the SSID name, GWN-Cloud and uses a randomly generated Wi-Fi password. Instead of using the default SSID, we will add a new SSID. Toggle this option to enable this Wi-Fi network. Enter the name of the SSID that will be used for your Wi-Fi network. In this configuration example, set the client IP assignment to bridge mode. In bridge mode, the GWN access point acts as a transparent bridge for DHCP traffic. This allows wireless clients to request their IP addresses from an upstream DHCP server. In NAT mode, the GWN access point acts as a DHCP server for wireless clients. We are not using any VLANs in this configuration example. In case you decide to associate your Wi-Fi network to a particular VLAN, toggle this option and enter the VLAN ID. Also, ensure the switch port connecting the access point allows the traffic on the defined VLAN to pass through. You can select the frequency bands to use for your Wi-Fi network. 6 GHz band should only be selected when you are deploying a GWN access point that supports it, such as GWN7665 and GWN7672. GWN access points support different Wi-Fi authentication types, including pre-shared key for personal networks or the 802.1x framework for enterprise use. We will select personal for our configuration and enter the pre-shared key. Select your desired security protocol. WPA3 is the most secure and provides the highest level of protection against attacks like password cracking and man-in-the-middle attacks. When WPA3 is enforced, wireless clients must support it to connect successfully. If any client devices are not compatible with WPA3, they will fail to connect. For this configuration, we will enable both WPA2 and WPA3. The authentication type and security protocol are tied to the SSID. If you want to offer different types of authentication for Wi-Fi access with the same access point, you can configure multiple SSIDs. Access control features allow you to restrict access to your Wi-Fi network by creating Mac-based authorized lists, isolating wireless clients, and setting time and bandwidth limits for clients on your Wi-Fi network. Bandwidth control ensures that wireless clients don't consume more bandwidth than they should by implementing upload and download limits. The bandwidth limits can be applied to users or an SSID. Bandwidth and time limits are generally configured with guest Wi-Fi clients, so they do not impact the bandwidth available for your critical business applications. To configuring your SSID with the required parameters, click on Device Assignment and select the access points that you want to broadcast this SSID. You can explicitly select which GWN devices use this SSID, or organize devices into groups so you can assign the SSID to all devices in that group. To assign an SSID to a device group, you should first create the device group in your network, add devices to it, and then you can associate the SSID with that group. You can define your device groups by using group management under device configuration page. Device group is useful when you have a large number of GWN access points in the same network, and you want to segment them by category to optimize device management. 
There are also advanced features that can be implemented such as limiting the number of concurrent clients per radio and defining the inactivity timeout after which a wireless client is aged out if there is no wireless activity. Inactivity timeout is essential, especially in public Wi-Fi networks with transient wireless clients. It helps to prevent the access point from reaching limits in terms of the number of concurrent clients that can connect. It also prevents idle devices from taking up DHCP leases. To improve the roaming experience of wireless clients, GWN access points support Voice Enterprise. Voice Enterprise is built on the three Wi-Fi standards, 802.11R, K, and V. They are designed to help the client make better roaming decisions. It's important to note that some legacy devices may not work well with this feature enabled. The Global Radio Settings act as a template for all access points in the same network. When a GWN access point is added to a network, it will automatically apply the parameters defined under the Global Radio Settings. There are several parameters that can be applied globally such as band steering, airtime fairness, channel width, radio power, and minimum RSSI. To override the global settings for a particular access point, go to Devices Configuration page and select the access point or wireless router that you need to edit. This will open the settings panel for the specific access point. For instance, if you need to enable band steering on only this access point, change the parameter from the global radio settings While the global radio settings are ideal for consistent configuration across an entire network, device-specific configuration applies settings to individual access points based on specific needs and operational requirements. There are additional settings that can be implemented globally at the network level. This includes region and time zone. You can also configure the devices to sync the time from GDMS to provide better time accuracy and consistent time synchronization across all GWN devices in the same network. In addition, a GDMS administrator can create schedule profiles for activating the built-in LED lights and rebooting GWN APs across the entire network. By default, when an access point or a wireless router is added to a network, it will be automatically added to all the configured SSIDs under the same network. This behavior can be disabled by toggling this option. GDMS networking offers several features that enable administrators to monitor all their Grandstream network devices, including GWN access points. The Network Topology tool provides administrators with a graphic overview of the network topology and the status of connected devices. The topology updates regularly as the network configuration changes, ensuring the displayed information is current and accurate. It also displays detailed information about the access point and the connected clients, such as device model, SSID name, the detected RSSI, and information about the active band and channel. The display details can be filtered using this panel. There is also the option to export the topology as a PNG image. To find extensive details about connected clients, go to Clients from this page. You can view all information regarding connected clients such as their IP addresses, host names, total bandwidth, etc. The displayed columns can be customized using this filter panel. Click on an individual client to view its specific information such as the usage graph and device details and history. The Configuration tab has settings for access rules which include blocking Wi-Fi access and setting bandwidth limits for a specific client. It also includes the feature to block a client to a particular access point within a wireless network. This feature is implemented for stationary devices to ensure they stay connected to the designated access point for improved performance or stability. To view details relevant to the access point, go to Devices and select the access point. The Info tab includes detailed information about the device, radio frequency, and connected clients. GDMS networking offers several troubleshooting real-time tools. 
The dashboard displays intuitive graphs, charts, and other graphics with information about core metrics, which provide real-time insights into network health, performance, and client activity. When experiencing an issue with an access point, locate the access point in the devices page and click the gear icon. The debug tab includes integrated live troubleshooting tools like ping, traceroute, and packet captures, reducing the need for on-site visits to diagnose real-time network issues. If you require any further information, feel free to contact our support team at Grand Street. This concludes today's video guide about Wi-Fi configuration in GDMS. Thank you for watching.